right. Hey everybody. So today we are going to be talking about direct warping your rigid heddle loom. And I think I have everything down here. I really hope that I do so that um, we can get this done. And uh, let me show you my setup. So over here I have set up my loom and <laughs> that would be the dog. Uh, I have um, two crates of fabric that are sitting on my loom stand to help hold it down. So yes, I do have enough fabric to do that. Um, I did have to make sure that I had the back beam facing the wall and the front beam towards um, my peg. And I've put my peg over here on the <laughs> IKEA uh, sawhorse, which is, I usually have... Um, my yarn swift and a ball winder on this and I just have it set up downstairs so that I can use it whenever I want because I know was playing with my ball winder and my swift upstairs so then I had to do this anyway so uh, I took the swift off and I put the peg and this peg does come with your rigid heddle loom so you get the peg and you get the clamp as well and I've just chosen to put it on um, this because it was convenient for me um, some people put it on, um, you know, their like table or whatever. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to run back and forth and talk to you and we are going to get started, um, warping on the rigid heddle loom and I'm going to, I will end up taking the camera kind of with me, uh, to show you what's going on. So, uh, let's start over here and I can talk about my plans and let me grab the stool. So I'm not actually going to make like the whole warp for the rigid huddle loom today. I'm going to show you how to get started. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, calculating and um, like EPI, which is ends per inch, and uh, PPI, which is picks per inch, and, and all that fancy schmancy stuff, right, to get started with weaving. So um, let's see. The important thing is I am using... This book, it is called Inventive Weaving on a Little Loom. Um, I've also listened to some of the YouTube videos from, uh, I think it's Tammy Pock, I think that's her name, um, out of Arizona. I am by no means an expert on this. What we're doing is kind of like having a, a weaving Wednesday, learn along with Kelly. And I have woven in the past. I know, I know the essentials, I know a little more than the essentials, and yet it's been so long. And I've never done rigid heddle. I, I had a, I used a floor loom the last time I did this, or I used like tapestry looms. So this is like this is kind of different. It's kind of new, and uh, and like and I make woven patches on my little socks. So I'm, I'm not entirely like unfamiliar. I'm just kind of unfamiliar with this. So I have been doing my research and using my book, and um, there's a really good section in here about um, warping and about the direct peg method. And one of the first things that we need to do is, um, I know that I have a 32 inch loom and I know that I have the eight dent reed in here. So what I actually need to do is um, like measure my reed and mark the center point because uh, I will be using that in my warping to make sure that um, I bring all of my ends uh, incorrectly because you have to like measure to either side of the center point and the other thing that I have to do is I have to decide how wide I actually want this piece to be in the end and um, you have something that's called shrinkage so you do lose a little bit of the width of uh, your piece as you're weaving and that's just simply because the the fabric pulls in a little bit as you weave due to the warp and the weft interacting and the selvage and the because of the beading action. It's all these things that interact and so you may start off with what you think will be a 22 inch width and you lose 10% so really you have like a 19 you know 0.8 or 19.75 inch width uh, and then you can also lose a little bit of width and length as well in the finishing because uh, the weaving again will tend to pull in. Weaving doesn't tend to loosen like knitting does and it's part of the structure of the fabric of weaving. 
So that's something that you have to take into account as well. Um, so when you have a new loom or you haven't used your loom, um, one of the first things that you do is actually, and I'm gonna mark my place here, quick. Yes, with a giant bag of yarn. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take my measuring tape and I actually have a black Sharpie marker because I'm going to be brave and just do it. And if I make a mistake, I know how to take Sharpie off, so it's not a big deal. And uh, I am going to go in here and I just want to measure all the way along. So there's my, it's just over 32 inches, which does make sense uh, because that's a 32 inch weaving width. And um, I'm going to measure here to here. So 31, I'm going to call that 31 and a half inches. And maybe I'll call it 31. 31 inches for all of my dents. Because of course I can't really use the space off to these ends. So let's see, half of 31 would be 15 and a half inches. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to measure at my 15 and a half inch mark. And that is this one. And this mark might actually not take because uh, the wood is treated so well. Good job, Kromsky. So I have a tiny, tiny, okay, these ones can make it a bigger mark. There we go. So I have a nice mark here. Now the other thing that I think I want to do is I want to take my front beam. You know, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing and measure all the way across on this guy. So this is like 33 and a quarter. So let's see, 16 and a half, and 16 and and I have to be 33, so 16, and like another 16, another 8, another 8. And I'm just going to put a little mark right here as well, because what I want to happen is I want the warp um, when I get to the middle to line up. So that's really important. So that's why I have marked, I have marked my loom by putting a little Sharpie mark both on the rigid heddle um, read and on the front beam so that I know what I'm doing. And this was another thing. I didn't think about this yesterday when I was starting to set this up and I aimed my back beam towards um, my warping peg and I really needed to have my front beam there because what we're going to be doing is tying on to the back beam and then we're going to weight the yarn so that uh, we have even tension and then we're going to wind it on to the back beam and then thread it through, uh, well, we will have already threaded it through part of it, was, and we'll thread through the slots, not the holes today. Um, yes, hi, Abby, and Abby's come to see me. Um, and then we'll tie on to the front beam. So, you know, there's all these things that are happening. So I have some things that are set up. Clearly I have the warping peg behind me. I have my loom here. I've weighted my loom stand so that my loom doesn't move as much. I have the apron rod from my back beam set into my warping helper, which is this guy here. Um, and I'm actually going to start, eh, I was going to start from the left and work to the right, but I guess I'll start from the right and work to the left. I don't think it matters which side you start on so much as that you're just consistent in your tension throughout. And you don't want to be really tight in your tension. That's what I've read. That's what I've watched. You want to be consistent and even, but not tight with your tension. And uh, there's even a warning that comes with your loom that says, be very careful about not um, tightening your warps too much because it can bow or bend um, this back beam and then you can break your machine. So that's an important point to know as well. Now I've chosen to do the direct warp with the peg method because I don't really want to fuss with the warping board. I've done warping boards. They work. They work great. And people have used them for like thousands of years because they do work. But um, man, I just want to get this warp on here and I don't really want to fuss with the warping board and having to tie it all up and chain it. And I've been there, done that, and we are moving on. So let's get cracking on some of this. Um, let's talk with, uh, I kind of decided
decided that I want something a little bit wider, so I think I am going to go for, um, I might need calculations, calculations, I need paper, because my phone is in use and I gotta do it old school. Um, so if I want to do, um, say a 22 inch width-ish piece, uh, and I assume that I'm going to have, and I am making an assumption, of course, when I say assume, um, about a 10% loss, then um, I am going to lose about, uh, like what, if I want a 20 inch wide piece, um, that would mean that I would possibly lose two inches, so my piece would end up being 18 inches wide. And, um, and this is like just sort of a practice, uh, I'm just throwing a warp on here and I'm just gonna go with it kind of thing. I don't really have a true plan. Abby, go play with your toy elsewhere, honey. Just go play with your toy, thank you. Um, I don't have a true plan for exactly what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, this is just kind of a play, play thing. And one moment, come on, Abby. Come here. Can you go crate? Crate. Thank you. Sorry about that. She's so excited that I'm down here. Um, but we got things to talk about, man. I want to get through this so that, you know, I can get the warp on here. So let's assume that I want like 22 inches wide. And that means that, uh, oh wait, I had said 20 inches. Well, now I forget what I'm doing. This is terrible. Let's say I want something pretty wide. Okay, you are like not sticking. So 22 inches. I think this poor little thing is broken. That's all right. Uh, so 22 inches. That would be pretty wide. So maybe I don't want something quite that wide. Maybe I want something that will be 20 inches wide. So I need to add back another 10%. So I will have to to have enough ends to do 22 inches. So what does that mean for me? That means that with an eight dent reed, this is the important part, eight times 22, this is gonna be a lot of ends. 160, it's 176 ends because um, I have an eight dent reed, so I get eight ends per inch. And let's see. I need to do it 11 inches on either side of my mark as well. So that's an important thing to note. And how long do I want to make this? How long should I make my warp? What do you think? That's always a good question. To know that, we have to know where our warping peg is set. And I might have to move it. And hey, Tamara. Oh, yeah, the dogs, man. Oh, the dogs. Let's see. I go... Here to here, so I've already got two feet here. Then, let's see, so that's another 36. So that's three feet, that's five feet, and then another, let's see, so that's uh, six, eight feet. Hmm. That's not very long. That's only a not, that's, mm, yeah, it's not even a three yard work. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to do some more measuring. So here's what I'm doing. I'm actually measuring from the back beam over to my peg here. Um, and that's, I'm just trying to figure out how much further I need to go. And yes, this is our like downstairs where I keep a bunch of my crafty stuff. So yeah, now I've moved this out because I wanna see how much further this gets me. So, let's do 36 inches. About in here. 36 inches. About in here. Uh, and I'm gonna have to go a little further even yet. Okay. That ought to do it now. That'll give me about a three yard warp. 
because you know if you're gonna do it you might as well have fun with it so i'm gonna put a big enough warp on that uh you know i don't have to reset immediately and i'm not trying to weave dish towels i kind of want like a scarf or something and i'm playing like i don't have a huge plan for this um also my buttons keep popping open that's okay uh so i have like a lot of leftover yarn like a lot and um, these happen to be all Teresa Roosh Tencel. Um, a good chunk of this is 3-2 weight, uh, which should fit all right in the 8-dent reed. I probably should have gone up a size, or I should have picked the 10-dent reed, but meh. I'm going to make this work because I'm playing, and I'm just going to figure it out. And, you know, I'm going to have Ina, like, weave with me. So this is like a really, this is going to be kind of a wonky plain weave thing, but I'm going to do some stripes and some funky stuff and it'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. It'll be a great learning experience. And that's really all I'm after for this first one. It's just a great learning experience. So I'm just going to pick like, you know, random colors and try to do um, my 176 ends and uh, my 11 inches out. So. Oh, look, there was another ball sitting on the table that fell out of the bag. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just, which color should I start with? What do you guys think? What color should I start with? So I have like this rust color, or I got some pink. I hate pink, but Ina loves it. Um, this one's like black and white. Here's like a turquoise blue. What color should I start with? Just pick one. First person to pick a color is going to be the color that I start with, because why not? Uh, I have navy blue. Or this one's kind of fun. I don't know. This is like a steel blue. So look, I've got rust and pink and black and turquoise and navy blue and and this turquoise. I got to vote for turquoise and rust. So we're going to do turquoise and then we're going to do rust because why not? I don't have a ton of the turquoise either, so this will be good. We'll just throw it in the warp and see what happens. So I'm, I think I'll do um, maybe, we'll see if this will hold out for four ends because I don't have a ton of it. And then we'll throw some rust in and uh, see what happens. So I'm just gonna like toss my ball back here behind my loom. I'll try to, try to turn this. And um, the first thing that we want to do is we're just going to like leave this ball down here. Usually you'd use cones, but I just have these balls of yarn left over. And um, I'm just going to make an overhand knot so that I can slide this onto my, um, what do they call this, the warping helper, I think is what they call it, um, on my, just an overhand knot, like not even a fancy one. I didn't even measure this sucker. Um, so this is my rod and I just want to slide this on and I want to be able to get around this. So you may see me having to move this back and forth a little bit. And then the next thing is um, I need to send this through and I need to send it through about 11 inches away from that mark. So that's the next piece is 11 inches. And I'm actually just going to stick, I hope that it holds, stick my uh, pedal hook in here. And all I'm doing is catching a loop with my heddle hook and pulling it through. Now I get to walk. Now this is the disadvantage or the advantage if you are feeling a little bit chunky like I am right now, um, of the <laughs> direct uh, warp. Oop, I got a little not forming over here. Um, oh, I see part of you has fallen out. Get back in the middle. Get back in the middle where you belong. Which side did you even come from? Now this is a disadvantage to the, the yarn ball method that I am currently using is that it just decided to barf its guts out. Sorry, bird the yarn baby. There we go. All right, and I'm just going to grab this loop 
There we go. And I'm walking it over to the pig. I know you can't see it, so I'll move the camera here in a second. This is kind of fun. So this is the disadvantage. This is the disadvantage that, that you have to walk all the way. So I have to walk back and forth and back and forth. But you know what? Mm -hmm. It's good for me. And I'm going to get steps. So, anyway. I have an ink all the way I was taught to warp versus was warp. Yeah, warp is the long direction. <laughs> I like warp speed on Star Trek. That's true. Uh, that's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. You guys are funny. I'm so glad you're talking to me today. Anyway, so we're going to get steps. I'm going to get lots of steps. Um, putting this warp on. And um, when I do this, I do want to make sure, there we go, that I'm not twisting it. And um, you want, like I said, you want decent tension, but you also don't want your warp to be too tight when you get started with it. So uh, we're going to go back over here again. Um, again, I've been watching um, Tammy Pop's videos, found them very educational. And one of the things that she talks about is how uh, you want to keep even tension. And then you want to remember that if you are going um, under your warping rod uh, this time, then you'll go over it next time. And that'll matter more as we go along. But what we're going to do is just keep pulling these loops through, uh, right here, through the next slot. That's the key, is we just keep pulling it through the slot. And I'm gonna walk, and we're gonna walk all the way back over here. Now another thing that I found really interesting and also really um, helpful in one of her videos was she talked about some tips for um, the rigid heddle weaving. And one of the things that she talked about was, um, oh, that's actually working out fine. Yay, I really hope I'm doing this right. I could be doing this totally wrong because this is like learn along with Kelly. So don't take this as, as like, the absolute and only way to do this because I might come back next week and tell you that I did it all wrong. I don't think I did. I've been trying really hard to read and learn, but, but I could be wrong. So, you know, that happens. Um, another thing that she talked about was uh, she does this like single finger flick thing where she, you know, holds the loop and uh, makes sure that you know, she brings it through with her finger, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. So, um, really interesting videos on YouTube from her if you haven't watched them. Another good tip that she talked about was about the time that you get half of your work done, um, one of the things that you'll want to do is uh, move your peg so that, uh, and not that you have to do it, she used two pegs, but one of the things you can do to help with waste is to um, move your warping peg halfway through so that um, one half of your loom doesn't have to go as far as the other half of your loom has to. So that's something to think about as well. Uh, and I actually think I'm just gonna go with these six, I know what, I'm gonna put one more. We'll put eight, eight ends over here of turquoise because eh, you know, why not? It's fun, might as well, might as well. And, you know, like I said, I have no plan for this. I'm just doing it. And we're having fun with it. So, here we go again. And I, I'm trying to keep my tension kind of as even as possible as I'm doing this. Fun, okay, isn't that fun? And see, I'm gonna get all kinds of steps in as I'm warping today because, you know, I gotta walk back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, now, because I want to go ahead and change colors, and we're gonna throw some rust in now, and then maybe I'll do some navy blue too, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and not hold my scissors like that. That would be dangerous. Don't do what I just tried to do. Don't do what I just tried to do. Okay. So, I'm just going to see it needs to be somewhere around in here. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna make a loop 
throw this in here and hope that my tension isn't too far off. Eh, it's okay. I can always adjust this later. It is one thing that you learn. Also, you learn not to be afraid of like cutting and uh, tying in ends and I just want to I want to set that up out of the way because I do want to use that color again. But now we're going to throw another color in because why not? You know, I've got this nice, like, dark rust color. They're all leftovers, so may as well take advantage of them. We're going to be making a really, really funky, funky scarf. That's what I got to say. It's going to be a funky, funky scarf. Um, anyway. And she talks about going under and holding her finger forward. I am trying to make sure that I hit every slot as I go too. Remember, I am not going through the uh, holes. You do that later. We are just warping through the slots. And if I'm doing this wrong, feel free to tell me. But, okay. Not bad. And I'm going to throw some like rust on and clearly I have to tighten that up a little bit, but you know, kind of fun, kind of fun, a little something different. Um, if you have questions about weaving, feel free to let me know because, uh, you know, I am happy to do research for you and, um, talk to friends and, you know, I do have several friends that, uh, weave or know more about weaving than what I do. So again, I'm happy to share their knowledge <laughs> with all of you uh, if there's a specific question that you have. And again, this is gonna give me a lot of steps today. Um, now I only have the one warping peg, so when I get about halfway through my warp, because I don't want to pull the second half over towards where I have my warping peg, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna take that loop off. I'm not going to cut it, I'm just going to throw an overhand uh, loop in it so that uh, I can keep all of those ends together and I'm going to drop them out of the way and I will keep warping after I switch um, the end. So I'm just going to turn my, um, I'm just going to turn my sawhorse around so that I can continue to use that warping peg and not um, put as much yarn on it because you go at an angle so then you use more yarn. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so that's that's the plan there. And um, I don't know, I think this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to finish my warp today. Not with you all. Because even though this is faster, not that fast. Um, and I like there are speed methods of warping um, floor looms, but we're just having fun with our little rigid heddle here, so. Anyway, look at this! It almost looks like we're trying to weave something. It's so exciting. And see, I clearly have this one. That's that end where I cut it. So I'm going to have to tighten that guy up, but not a huge deal. I'll just pull it forward and make the loop smaller. Um, anyway as we go forward. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for a moment and talk to you guys about what's going on. So, uh, Wednesdays are for weaving and hopefully I will have my warp made so that next Wednesday we can um, do the actual tying up um, onto the back beam. Back beam? Yes, onto the back beam. I had to think a minute. Words were not coming to me. And then uh, we will be able to do the packing and the winding on. And um, then probably the following week, we'll do the tying on to the front beam. And then we'll talk about um, putting in like your, your waste yarn at the beginning so that you can set your shed better. Um, and yeah, and I'm just kind of like reading along with my little goobery book here and I am looking up extra YouTube videos <laughs> and this is going to be like a learn along with Kelly for Weaving Wednesdays. Um, so if you see that I'm doing something really wrong, do let me know because although I am uh, researching, I, I can still get things wrong. I can get things wrong and it's okay um, because then you learn and you move forward and hopefully you don't get it wrong again. That's the idea. 
so. And I'm kind of excited to get this all ready to go in a few weeks so that I can bring Ina down here with me and we can like weave together and maybe she will um, enjoy it and stop stealing all of my crafting stuff so much. I know it's a pipe dream, but just let me have it right now. Just let me have it. So, um, oh, I meant to bring my, my sweater down. So I actually had to put my sweater on hold um, on the body and switch to working on the sleeves because um, I don't have matching yarn. If you remember, I did like four different rovings that go together. And um, I'm thinking I'll end up using three of them. So I took the three that matched best and kind of kicked out the one that didn't match as well. And um, now I am knitting down the sleeves. I'm gonna put the sleeves on and then keep going down the body um, once I know if I have any leftover yarn from my sleeves. I'm gonna do both my sleeves and my neckband and then come back and finish the body and then add on to it because I have a whole skein of orange, which is great and I, I'm going to use it at some point in the body, but I want to use as much as I can of my other two skeins before I get to that point. And because I'm knitting it top down and on circular needles, um, interchangeables, I was actually able to take one of the little interchangeable pieces to make your cable longer. Mm. And I joined it in the round so that it can't, uh, you know, escape. And I had just a little bit of yarn left, so I threaded the um, cable through the center of my ball of yarn so that it's also not getting in my way while I'm working on the sleeves. And it's coming along beautifully. I will try to put a post up on um, the Facebook, Instagram accounts sometime soon and show you uh, what I did there and, and why it works, because it works beautifully. Love my interchangeable sets. I love my Haya Haya interchangeable sets. I have to say, mm. Chow Goo are great too, but love the interchangeable sets. They're just, they just, they work in so many ways. Anyway, very exciting. So just want to remind you again about the Crafters Year of Self Care. I am, um, I'm working on my uh, sweater, clearly. I'm trying to get that done. Also partially because I did the spin together, uh, selfish make along. So I spun all the yarn and now it's time to do the make along portion of that. And I got in <laughs> both of my shipments um, of fi like fabric that I bought because uh, this is February, which is the treat yourself month. Um, so if you haven't treated yourself, then, you know, treat yourself. And, oh, yeah, see, Kathy, those chow goos, they are really awesome, right? I like those. I, you know, I'm a high a high girl. I like the cable just a little bit better because it is not as stiff as the uh, chow goo red lace cables. But Tina loves the chow goo, so, you know, to each their own. you got to try a lot of needles to find out what you like best. So, hang on. Uh, I have to walk behind here. Don't laugh at me too much. I haven't washed it yet. So, yeah, this is all the yarn, um, yarn. This is all the fabric that I ordered for the Treat Yourself Month. I ordered it early because, um, well, that was all pre-order. This one's actually custom. This one's pre-order. And look, I got bunnies <laughs> and strawberries uh, and a cute little checkerboard. And then this is a bunny panel, which is really hard to see, but there's a super cute bunny panel. And then this one's space with like planets and stars and suns. And Ina actually tried to steal that one already. She really liked the space one. And then um, I also ordered some panels. These took a long time. Um, these are like eight to 10 weeks that you order them before you get them because they're custom printed. Um, but I got some really cute, um, can't even see them. I have some really cute ones. One of them is um, this elephant. Let's see if I can get it out. So, such a cute elephant. Here, look, super cute elephant. So I'm gonna sew some like really cute matching mommy daughter shirts um, because I got a kids panel and an adult panel in this. So cute, right? Anyway, uh, so I didn't. This wasn't like custom, custom in terms of like, I didn't send off my own artwork and have it printed. This was custom. Um, so the first batch that I showed you, they do pre-order rounds. So um, if you pre-order, then you're guaranteed the fabric. If you don't, then you may not get any because there might not be any left on the bolt when it comes in. 
Um, that one I got from knitfabric.com, which is actually an Oregon company. So I was supporting an Oregon company, even though I'm here in the Midwest now. Um, this one is Ash and Elm, and uh, they do panels. So they have a set of panels that they um, post. Oh, that one doesn't have anything on it. Um, they have a set of panels that they have posted on their website, and then you can order them in your color and size and fabric that you want. Um, so it's kind of a similar idea. It's just you um, end up with slightly different things. Where is one of the others? Let's see if I can find another one. I, I just, I flopped these away. I got them out and I went, huh, this one's the glitter unicorn. She's so, like, she's gonna love this. I'm gonna make this into a shirt for her too. This glitter unicorn. Uh, yeah, my kid's gonna love this. She's like really into unicorns right now. Unicorns and rainbows and cats and pink. And I am not a pink fan, but I am a good mama. So, you know, pink. Um, anyway, she likes a lot of things. Those happen to be like, the most common but there are places where you can get your own custom fabric printed um you know spoon flower always comes to mind but there are other places as well where you can get your own custom knit fabric and or woven fabric printed it just depends on what you want so i treated myself to some extra special fabric and i did get um you know some of the matching colors i got black and i got um this kind of beautiful like dusky blue gray uh to kind of go with these and then, um, and I ordered, of course, the, <laughs> the custom fabric, the pre-order fabric. Um, and yeah, Spoonflower is definitely not cheap, not cheap. Um, but if you really want something bad enough, you'll pay for it. So, and they know that, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, because it is treat yourself month after all. So remember to be posting on social media, Facebook, Instagram, you can tweet us if you want. We don't really care. YouTube, if you're a YouTuber. Um, TikTok, if you're a TikToker. Post and tell us about your year of self-care because, um, you know, we, we want to know about it. And we, oh, and I forgot to have Tina pick a prize winner. Shoot. Tina, on Friday, I'm going to, like, send her a message and tell her she has to do it. She is going to pick a prize winner for January. And, um... You know out of all the posts that people put up and we don't have a ton so right now like your odds of winning a prize are pretty darn good so make sure that you're posting a little something and tag us with bsfe black sheep fiber emporium or just tag black sheep fiber emporium if you want to write it all out uh that way we know that you are doing the year of self-care and you're posting so that we can find it because you know we want yeah we want to do the whole thing right um yeah yeah it's the year of self-care Let's see, uh, tomorrow night starts my class on um, the Beginners Learn to Knit Lace. So if you're interested in that, I do still have three spots left in my class. Um, sign up today or tomorrow morning at the very latest. That way I can make sure I get the invitation out to you for our class meeting. We're using this booklet. It's, I have a PDF copy that I'll send you, but I can also send you a hard copy if you sign up. It's called If You Can Knit, You Can Knit Lace. I know you can't read that because it's backwards. Um, but I just want to invite you to uh, take a class with us. Don't forget, I'm doing all kinds of classes. Like I'm doing Estonian lace and Shetland lace and um, intermediate lace. And I've got an intermediate tatting class. And I have another like beginner's tatting class coming up. And Tina's teaching beginner knitting and beginner crochet. So if you have friends and family that are interested in those things, please let them know. I love teaching and I really miss being able to do it in person. So this is fulfilling a deep-seated need that Kelly has to teach by having her classes and having her students. And we try to do fairly inexpensive classes. Uh, so, you know, most of the time we don't pay ourselves a ton uh, <laughs> or much. Um, and you do get a lot of value in the class because I, like I give you freebies and I make you extra stuff when you take my classes because I can, so I do. Um, what else do I need to tell you? I don't know. I feel like I've been on here forever. And I've been talking a lot and I'm so, thirsty. I'm definitely going to have to go get some water and put on my audiobook so I can keep warping on my loom. And I'll have to let the dog out because she is very sad that I put her in the laundry room and she doesn't get to participate. So anyway, um, until let's see Monday, next Monday, when we are going to start a history of lace. In fact, you know, Mondays might just become history of lace for a while and we'll do different laces every time. I think that would be fun. Would that be fun? I kind of want to do that. I think we're going to do that. I think Mondays we're going to do histories of lace. And we'll just pick all different kinds of lace. And so every Monday, I'll just do a different lace. So we'll do tatting, and we'll do knitting, and we'll do crochet, and we'll just do all kinds of lace stuff. That sounds fun. 
Okay, sounds fun to me. At least for a little bit. So Mondays will be laced for a while and Wednesdays will be weaving and we'll have all kinds of fun. And make sure that you are liking and following our Facebook page, our Instagram channel, our YouTube channel, so that you get notifications of when we go live. Um, if you check out the TikTok channel, I've been doing a whole series over there on how to tat. Uh, so I've been putting up a one minute video every day with a different part on how to tat. And then I have a full seven minute-ish video on YouTube that walks you through all of the steps all at once if you wanna do it that way. So uh, we are trying to be as accessible as we can. And I tried to close caption most of those shorter videos. The longer videos we rely on the auto uh, closed captioning from YouTube, but the shorter ones I am trying to remember now to go in and, and do the closed captioning and put those up. So anyway, if there's something that you really want to see or if there's a type of lace that you really want me to explore the history of, or um, you know, if there's a weaving question that you have, please remember to send me an email or drop a comment um, on one of these videos so that I can read it and find out. Because um, you know, I'm kind of here to teach and educate. It's all kinds of fun for me. And make sure to share our videos to your friends and family so that they know that we're doing fun stuff too. Um, especially all your crafty friends. I know some of your family may not care, but you know, the crafty ones, the ones that like to knit and crochet and tat and weave and spin and dye and oh yeah Tina needs to do more dyeing we should really like harass her to do more dyeing yeah sounds like a plan all right so until next monday please take care of yourself um stay happy stay healthy uh, take care of yourself physically mentally emotionally craftually as i've said in the past um make sure that you are taking care of yourself uh you know do the physical distancing wash your hands wear your mask uh if you happen to be on medication, please remember to take your medication. Drink lots of water every day. Get in your exercise. It's really hard right now. Um, we have had like five straight days of below freezing temperatures and we have like 10 more days to get through. So it's really hard to get your steps in at the moment. But hey, I'm doing the direct warp peg method. So I'm gonna be getting a few more steps today as I go back and forth and back and forth, right? So think of creative ways to get those steps in. And until next Monday, keep crafting. I'll see you then.